Welcome to k k Real Talk. I'm Kristen McRoby, founder of Endometriosis and Me. And you can find everything about me at endometriosisme.com. Today we are talking about self-empowerment, self-care, and mindfulness. We are here with Vanita again. So let's get started. So let's start with some mindfulness. So why is mindfulness really important? So mindfulness helps us to get attuned to our inner sort of instincts, our own environment. Um, I believe that we all have a higher intelligence, right? So if we are not aware of how our body feels, you know, uh, what stresses me out, what, um, what kind of foods work for me, what kind of things. So everybody is different. And I think that we have this inner wisdom inside of all of us. And if we don't silence our mind and we don't quiet our mind enough to get in tune with that, we make wrong decisions. And I find it's really unfortunate that in society, um, we're always going to books and newspapers and doctors and other people outside of ourselves to find out what's good for me. And um, I find that really sad and ironic because really the answers are within. I totally agree. I've just started practicing mindfulness and I will say it's hard to get started um, and like, be within yourself and meditate and really know how you're feeling and what works for you. And it's hard to get started. So I often find that because of that, people don't continue with it and don't keep it consistent. And so they kind of give it up. So, um, you know, starting at, from a place of, it doesn't have to be, I actually am against, um, people just designating a certain time where they're going to be mindful in the day and saying, okay, I'm only going to meditate for 15, 20 minutes at this time and this schedule. No, we should be ideally trying to aim to be mindful throughout the day. So an example of that, if you, if you say it's difficult to start is when you're eating your breakfast, for example, or any meal for that matter, sort of, you know, uh, looking at your food and eating slowly and consciously and really thinking about the nutrients and the food that you're getting like into your system, right? So it's every single thing you do when you're having a conversation with a friend and when you're, um, whatever you're doing, you're in the present moment and you're really present with that person. You're not texting someone, you're not your mind is not in like five different places, but you're truly just there. So it's really more of a lifestyle change, I would say. It's sort of whatever we do, we try to focus 100% energy mindfully in whatever we're doing. And what that does is actually when we're not so scattered, the, the, um, the quality, the richness of the experience that we want is, is much more stronger. And we do feel more empowered that way uh, because I've, uh, I'm a therapist and I, I've seen, even if I sit with somebody for five minutes, if they're going through grief, but I'm like looking in their eyes and I'm really with them, they feel that. But if I'm sort of like looking at my notes and like, um, you know, just sort of checkbox kind of thing, they feel that, right? So it's sort of really just a lifestyle change, I would say. It's not a particular exercise. When we say mindfulness, I think people start thinking it's like this, I don't know, weird spiritual stuff. And, you know, it's, it's not like they, they don't know how to do it, right? And, and what I like to think of it, it's sort of like, it's who you were before all of this stuff happened before, you know, like we were raised and socialized in our environments and TV and all that stuff. So just taking away all that stuff, who am I facing myself in the mirror and looking at myself and say, I'm happy with this. Like I am content just with this. And it's hard. It does take lots of time. It took a lot of time for us to develop that. So sort of undoing the packaging, if you will. 
and especially in a day and age like today and especially especially as women we have so much going on we're always thinking about 10,000 things like I got to do my groceries and I need to clean that and I have this due date and that due date I got to take my kids here and there and it's just like so much going on that it's hard to be in tune with yourself because you're all your brain is literally in a hundred places at once and so I think if we learn to slow down and appreciate the moment and be present and we're, we're just really going to get a, a lift in our quality of life just with our experiences like being one-on-one -on -one with someone rather than I'm talking to you but I'm thinking of 25 other things. I think you've hit it on the head. I think that we feel overwhelmed because we might have like so many things to do. Like I have my calendar and I have so many appointments and things like that. So we're going through life just busy, just doing stuff without really thinking, do I need to do all these things? Right. And maybe if we sat with all our responsibilities and all our duties and saying that, you know what, maybe I can say no to some things. Maybe I can delegate some tasks to other people. Maybe you know, like actually sitting down with all that stuff and mindfully choosing, right, what I agree to do, what I commit to do, that's actually very empowering, right? Because otherwise we feel like life happens to us and we don't control what's happening in our lives. And that's really disempowering, right? So I think that the mindfulness is really just zoning in on, okay, what's the most important thing to me right now? There's 24 hours in a day. And what is important? What is not necessary? And prioritizing your time moves into self-care. And Kenny and I have talked about self-care a lot in previous episodes and just saying no to some activities that you don't necessarily need to do is caring for yourself and giving yourself time to relax and heal and anything that you want to do take a bath read a book mm -hmm. anything just delegating time for yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think so, we talked about this last time too is Pleasure is also very important, you know, and when we've had a very stressful, like we're always working, we're always doing these things. And then if we deprive ourselves of something like just having, you know, uh, some popcorn or like an uh, ice cream or like doing something that gives us some pleasure, right? Like, like we're counting calories, we're doing this, like everyone is, there's so much stress in terms of looking a certain way or you know, doing a certain thing and it's okay to be a few pounds overweight. It's okay to like, you know, not always have everything perfect and tidy in your apartment hundred times. Right. So like sometimes we got to let things go as well. And if we're so uptight about being perfect, which is not even possible, like it's perfection is sort of like, it's not reality. Right. And I think we just put too much pressure on ourselves to be perfect. So, of course, we have to think about consequences. So I'm not saying just do whatever the heck you want to do. My principle for, um, uh, you know, for pleasure is, number one, what you do, like your choices that you make should not harm other people, right? So, you know, if I'm in a committed relationship with someone, and, you know, if I find someone else attractive or whatever, if, if I know that's going to hurt my partner, if, you know, I'm flirting with someone or I'm being with someone, I mean, that's, that's just not okay, right? Like, you have to talk about these things or whatever, right? So you have to think about that. The other thing is, um, you know, you have to be true to who you are, right? So, um, you know, am I doing something because... It, you know, other people will think that I'm really great in this way or that. Like, am I doing this for self-motivating reason or somebody like to make other people think I'm so great and all of that? Because that is a very uh, temporary type of happiness. It's sort of like it's not real. 
And when you look at yourself in the mirror and you're saying, I'm doing this for the wrong reasons, then it, it, it really doesn't have a resonating sort of effect, you know? Um, and, um, it, you know, like, like, let's say I'm going to parties and I'm dressing up. Am I doing that for me or am I doing it so other people are like, wow, you look beautiful. You look, no, I should dress up because I want to feel beautiful for myself, not for somebody else's approval, right? And from that, I will derive more pleasure. So that's what I mean by pleasure, like, like happiness that I crave for myself, not for others, but for me. Right. And then the last point about the pleasure is that everything is a choice, but we have to know our limits. Right. So if there's more harm to myself uh, than, um, you know, the pros, right, like the benefits, then you, you have to consider that. Right. So I love wine, for example, I love drinking wine, but if I drink too much, I know I'm not going to feel great the next day. So I have to obviously know my dosage and how much is okay for my body and what's going to have a negative impact if I have too much or whatever. Same with food. I love food. I could eat a whole tray of cheese, but will I feel good about myself later? Probably not. So we just have to, like, what's empowering? The reason why I'm bringing this up is empowerment is about choice, freedom of choice. Our mind is the most powerful thing. And, um, you know, strength comes from being in control, right? Like if I feel like I don't have choice, I don't have control, that's really disempowering. And then people get depressed, right? But if I say, no, I'm choosing this, but I'm choosing this as my limit, or I'm choosing to say no, or I'm choosing whatever, it's that choice that empowers us. But in order to know what choices to make, we have to be mindful. We have to quiet our mind. We have to meditate. We have to think about what am I okay with letting go of? And what am I okay with not letting go of? You know, like these decisions are not easy, right? Because we have so many layers of socialization for all these years. So we're unpeeling and thinking and reflecting. And then I say, you know what? I'm not going to stop doing whatever, this particular thing that gives me pleasure, let's say. But if it harms someone, if I'm doing something that's going to give me negative consequences, all of these things, then, okay, this is my limits and this is how I'm going to fit it into my life. Right. So that's just, that's, that's what I recommend. And this is what works for me. Um, so yeah, that's what I, I love that. That's great advice. It's all about baby steps, moderation, consistency. Yeah. And moderation is really an internal, uh, thing right uh like you feel it in, intuitively if you've done too much of something but only if you tap into that internal awareness right like what somebody's moderation might be totally different from my moderation for something right yeah definitely trial and error what's right for you yeah and your values too, being honest with your own values. Like everybody has different values. Everyone has different beliefs. And as long as you're true to yourself, right, that's really important because if you're trying to accommodate for somebody else, let's say you're in a relationship and you are, uh, you know, trying to over accommodate to make the other person happy and sort of let go of your values a bit you're not going to feel good about yourself like long term um you're going to feel like you did so much for this person and you were not true to who you were and i mean long term that can have a lot of negative effects i've seen this over and over again in the couples work that i do and people hold grudges right they're like well i did all this for you i sacrificed all this for you i did all this for you but that was the whole problem you chose to sacrifice everything, even your own pleasure, your own happiness 
for something external to you. But that was a choice that you made. So can you really be mad at that person? Because it's something you did. Like you played a contributing role. So we need to take ownership of the decisions that we make. Every decision we make, there is a choice in that. Nobody's forcing us, right? And there are consequences to those decisions. I think as women, we do that a lot in many relationships. We just give and give like spouses and to children and really, especially mothers, forget about self-care and what their needs are and balancing needs versus wants and things like that. It all becomes external because you're giving everything to your child and forgetting about yourself. Yeah. And also, um, I just wanted to hit on this because I used to work in the domestic violence field for many years. And when people think of violence, they think of it mostly in a physical sense. But there are so many layers of violence. Like violence is essentially doing harm, right? Doing harm to someone. And even yourself, you could be doing that too. So self-neglect and, you know, not respecting yourself all of those things are actually bordering on abusive behavior, right? So, um, for example, what you just pointed out, like we do things for other people as women, especially um, guilt. Guilt, for example, is a form of manipulation, right? And a lot of people master this technique, right? To get people to do things that they don't want to do. And we should be aware also if we're doing that to others, because that's not right. You know, I mean, I know it sounds cliche, but we should do unto others as we expect them to do to us, right? Like, I wouldn't want to be guilted into doing something I don't want to do, right? Um, because later, it just leads to resentment and bitterness, right? And, and that's not healthy for me, you know? Um, so, so we have to let go of that. Um, so again, another reason why I really like how you put mindfulness and self-empowerment and all these topics together, because really, if I don't analyze, like, maybe I'm not conscious of it. Maybe I have been like getting people to do things that, you know, I'm like, oh, this is a good way to get this person to my husband to change or, you know, if I, I say, okay, I'll do this. If you do this, like I'm straight bargaining, like that, that's not right. Like really we have to accept people as they are. And cause we want them to accept us the way we are. Right. And then, you know, cause I do mediation I look at, okay, you have to accept that certain things about this person are not going to change. You're not going to change in terms of these things. But there are some things that we should accommodate and we can maybe try to work on. And the difference is there's something called um, interests and there's one that is positions, right? So our positions are our values, our morals, our things that are so strong that we cannot like compromise on. Or we shouldn't. People do try to change people to make them doing these different kind of techniques. But that's abusive, right? But if I consciously choose, again, being mindful, that's the only way I'll know consciously what I'm okay with giving up to get something. I'll say, okay, you know what? I'm not a morning person, uh, you know, but, you know, I know you are. And so maybe we can find a way to kind of like, you know, somebody has a certain routine or whatever, we can find a way that both people are happy in some way, living in the same space. Like, what are some ground rules for us? How can we work this out? But it doesn't mean that I'm going to say, okay, because I'm not a morning person and you are a morning person, I'm just going to be a morning person. Like, I'm not going to shift all the way. Because if you shift all the way from who you are, like, who the heck are you? You have to know your identity. You have to be true to yourself. And if you're not, that's self-neglect, self-harm. That's going to cause a lot of negative um, effects for you in the future, right? And, you know, temporarily, why do people do this? Because they want the other person to, number one, recognize them. 
the, oh, that's so nice of you. You're willing to do this for me, right? So they get a bit of that reinforcement and then they feel also they're doing something nice for that person that they love or whatever. So you get that temporary thing. But what happens is over time that becomes a habit, right? And when it becomes a habit, you stop getting recognized for this, whatever you're doing out of your comfort zone, because it just, that's just what you do now. Right. And so that sort of sacrifice or that whatever, um, it, it, it doesn't hold up in the long run, right? Like it's not recognized. And so you feel depressed and so it just causes a whole bunch of problems. So I'm just giving an example because I just dealt with a couple recently with these kind of dynamics, you know, and I said to uh, the person who was willing to totally change um, for their partner uh, in, in certain respects, um, you know, the partner had actually cheated and, and uh, you, know, you know, to get that person back, they felt they had to compensate by doing all these nice things because, oh, if she had just done all these more nicer things for the partner, then the partner wouldn't have wanted to go out and cheat. So this is like a double whammy. First of all, somebody hurts you and you're trying to compensate for that. And then it's, but it, the cry is for attention and recognition and all of that. So. The thing is that we fall into these traps and it's, it may sound, um, you know, but a, I think a lot of people can relate to that, you know, like a lot of people are in very unhealthy relationship dynamics. And that's because my experience of you is based on my experience of myself. Right? So if I don't really respect my boundaries and my values and myself, I'm going to let people walk all over me. I'm going to put myself in situations where I get hurt a lot. And then can I really blame the other person or am I really just doing this to myself? You know, and the only way we can determine that is if we silence our mind and we meditate and we're mindful and we think and reflect. And this could take years. This could take a long time and it's hard work, right? It's really hard work. But once we've been able to get to that point where we're clear about what we want, we're going to make better decisions. We're going to feel better about ourselves. We're going to only spend our energy on the people and the things that bring us joy. And we're not going to waste energy and time on like bad relationships, like unhealthy friendships, like things that are like not serving us. That's what I mean by pleasure, right? So not just like thinking about other people's happiness, but thinking about our own pleasure and our own happiness. That's very important. And I think one of the hardest things is about being more mindful is looking into your closest relationships and then your acquaintances and your friends and all that and seeing is this relationship benefiting me like what maybe, am I <laughs> yeah like yeah. You, you may love your parents but if they're horrible people and horrible to you is it a good idea to go see them yep and if you do feel if you still feel the obligation to see them because they're your parents just see them less maybe call them and, and Make sure you have these boundaries of what you will and will not talk about or whatever it is that you want to set, like set boundaries for people and right. stick yeah. to them. Absolutely. That's choice, right? I choose exactly. that controlled communication with, let's say, my family or my friends or an ex or whatever. Like you control that. It's your choice at the end of the day. How much you want to expose yourself to that? Absolutely. You're right. 
and that that's probably one of the most difficult parts about becoming mindful is putting those limitations on people or maybe even cutting those people out of your life depending on who it is and how you feel about how you've reflected on that relationship so i so based on just some science um i studied neuroscience and i you know, a lot of this is actually habits. It's just actually uh, the, the way our neurons are fired together, they wire together. That's sort of a saying that we have. And what that means is if I'm used to thinking a certain way, then I'm, I'm going to automatically start thinking some things without even processing it. I'm just sort of like automatic reactions. That, so I'm like a machine. It just does button and I just react in that same conditioned response. Unconditioning the way we think takes work. It's like exercise, right? So you gotta get used to and but so if you we start doing that, our brain is actually amazing. It's like there's the neuroplasticity research that's out there is telling us that even later in life, we can really change the way we think. And if we change the way we think, we change the way we feel. And then we change the way we experience the world around us, right? So, I mean, it, it, it's crazy, but it's, like you said, baby steps, right? So the first step is just to be more aware. Just Move yourself. Be, yeah, just being Move more yourself aware. yourself out of that autopilot. Yeah, and so uh, you're absolutely right. The thing that prevents us from doing it, the biggest things are fear, right? Um, and anxiety, anger, those are primitive emotions and they're natural, right? They're totally natural. It's sort of a protective mechanism. So I'm afraid of cutting out people out of my life because my real fear is that I don't want to be alone, you know? But would you rather be surrounded by bad company than being alone away from negativity do you know what i mean like it's hard and that's why i believe in a moderate approach that's why i'm not one of those people just abstinence like 100 percent cold turkey like because for me i know that's very difficult I, I i need to wean off of things slowly whereas some people can just say i'm not going to do this again done right so some people can and some people can you just really got to know yourself so I mean, acting too quickly as well is not good because maybe um, my perception of somebody is not really based on reality. It could be that I had, you know, a, a, a difficult conversation and maybe I start thinking this person is really not a nice person and they're jealous and they're having these, whatever. These are things I'm telling myself. If it's not true, I'm not, I shouldn't just go based on, one-time perception or whatever but if you uh watch and observe for a bit and you notice that there's certain patterns number one it might not be in that person's awareness it depends on how much this person means to you if you don't really care that much it doesn't matter but if this person was a long-term friend or a family member or something like that these are harder people to cut out of your life right then you know you 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 talk to them of course like you should not just cut them out of your life, but you should approach them and say, you know what, this is how this makes me feel. I think the problem is that a lot of people don't know how to communicate and, you know, they might just blow up. So that you build, build, build up your frustration and anger. And then all of a sudden one day you explode and you tell that person off, but this is not <laughs> healthy communication, right? So, you know, if, as soon as something bothers you, you, you check it out with that person. You say, you know what, Something you said uh, the other day, it, um, you know, I sat with it because again, you're being mindful and you sit with things before just responding. I'm totally guilty of that. I used to just respond very quickly when people would say things. And now I'm like, no, okay, let me just like bite my tongue. So I have a lot of scars on my tongue now. <laughs> bite my tongue and just spend a little bit of time and say, you know what? That really hurt me. That comment really, um, why did that hurt me? What, what, what was it about that? Was it the tone? Was it, what was it? Was it something that triggered a memory? What was it? So then approaching that person, say, you know what? 
this is the fact. So not exaggerating because I know, I don't know if you've gone through this, but if, if anyone's ever approached you and told you you've done something that you have not done, it, it's, it's really offensive, right? So, you know, instead saying, you know, I heard this is, you know, and then my interpretation of that was this. Is this true? So checking it out with that person. First of all, that's more respectful. Then they might say, oh, yeah, like I did say that, but I actually meant this. That's like really important. If that person saying, yeah, that's exactly what I meant. And I don't feel bad about it and whatever, right? Like, so at least you know. And, you know, like, you know, so I think it's really a process. Like I, I'm somebody who can't cut people out of my life unless I know for sure that this is what's happening. Right. Like I don't want to just whatever, but I've actually found through working on myself a lot, um, is, is that there have been a few people that did use me. Uh, I did uh, choose to be used as well, though I'm guilty of that because I'm always like to help people. I'm a therapist. I, you know, I'm a nice person. So whenever a friend needs something, I'm always there. But that I chose to do that. Um, I chose to get up 4 a.m. when my friends would break up with their boyfriends and I chose to do some things that I didn't need to do. So anyways, when, once I accept my responsibility in that, and I see that people have developed these habits of, oh, oh just call Vanita, just call Vanita. Um, I, I had to say no. I said, I'm sorry, but I, I will not do this anymore. They're like, but you always did that. Why aren't you going to do it now? I'm like, well, I choose not to do it. <laughs> it's the most empowering feeling when you can actually tell somebody it doesn't have to continue this way just because things have always been this way. It doesn't mean they have to continue this way because I'm consciously choosing another path. So you take back your power and it, it's incredible. So actually I've lost probably like half of the friends I used to have when I was younger, but I've made an incredible new amount of network like i've created some great uh quality friendships now like quality over quantity like and 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 the people i'm connecting with are people who understand me and respect me because i set those boundaries i tell them i'm not accepting this i'm expecting this and the people that respect me i i i feel that right? So it, it's totally different. And I changed my reality because I chose to not be stepped on anymore. So, and that's hard to do. It's, it's very, very hard. it's so hard. And you, you go through pain. Um, I went through a divorce. I, I struggled a lot. Um, I moved around a lot. Uh, life has been hard, but, uh, but struggle is only when you appreciate beauty after. Like if I don't go through something difficult, I don't know what bad it is, right? Like I don't know what to compare it to, right? And I think as endo sisters, we are all used to struggle. So today, what I'm going to end off on is I think that we should all do an activity this week. We should take a look at what we're, what and who we are surrounding ourselves with. Yeah. And look at, are these things and relationships and things that I'm doing serving me positively? Are the people around me bringing me positivity and bringing me up and uplifting me? Or yeah. all th are these people shitty and saying crappy things and you always feel crappy around them? So really be yeah. mindful of the relationships, mainly relationships, because I feel like they have the most impact and the most immediate effect when working on that. So I would look at the relationships first and do you feel like you're being your true self? Do you feel like 
you are positive when you're around that person and that person is positive back to you and you feel like just your energy is uplifted or is it someone that's bringing your energy down so just take a look at that and really just tune into it take some time to yourself at least once a day i know that planning it isn't the best but sometimes with busy schedules people kind of have to like plan it in but Mm -hmm. if you can be mindful all the time of course do that but just start with taking time to reflect on relationships by yourself and leave it in the comments if you guys felt like this was helpful or if you would like us to touch on something more in the video and we will see you guys next week